Okay, well, that was a little embarrassing, <laughs> uh, but not embarrassing enough to do it over. I have a new computer, and I just am not quite accustomed to how everything goes here. So please forgive me. All right. So uh, what we're now going to do is listen, uh, turn to page 85, and we're going to be doing the listening lesson. Okay, so I wanted to ask how many people understood a hundred percent of what they just heard? Okay, how many people understood eighty percent? Okay, how many people understood sixty percent? So for those of you who only understood sixty percent, I would like you to go to the back of the book on page 170 and here on the last column under unit 7 shopping uh, are, is the uh, dialogue that goes with the recording that we just heard and so would you please turn to that page and we're going to be listening and reading it again. Okay, hang on. You're going to be on 170. Look at this Sixteen 
Okay, so while I was listening, I thought I found a couple of places that might have been giving people trouble. So the first one might have been taxes and fees. Tax and fees. The next one, available. What is it? Available. The next one, afraid of. Afraid of. Next one, good used car. What is it? Good used car. So just from knowing and listening, I thought that perhaps these were the places that might give trouble. All right, let's go back to page 85 to section three and read the vocabulary words once more and then put them and read the paragraph that's just below it. The first one, afford. The next, balance. The next, cash. The next, credit. The next, that's right, debt. What is it? Debt. One more time, debt. The B is silent. The next one, financing. The next, interest. The next, pay off. The next, suggests. So now we're going to read together and remember reading out loud, please. Ken and his wife, Julie, are looking at cars. Ken wants to buy a new car that costs over $27,000. Julie thinks that they can't afford to spend that much money. The balance in their savings account is less than $8,000. She's afraid of getting into debt. But Ken says they can get financing to help pay for the new car. The interest rate is low, and they can take five years to pay off the loan. Ken isn't worried about buying things on credit. Julie disagrees. She suggests that they could buy a used car. She says her father never had a credit card. He always paid cash for everything. So looking at the little blue window here at the bottom of the page, it has useful language. The first one, to buy on credit. Next, to buy something now and pay for it later. So that's what buying on credit means. Okay, wonderful. So, since we've done this, we're now going to turn to page 86. And I'm going to keep 
I don't think you can see that. Okay, read out loud. Page 86. So here at the top of the page, it says modals. Okay, first time. Grammar focus. Could and should. Use could, so everyone please read together and read out loud. Use could to give suggestions. Use should to give advice. Should give stronger advice than could. Could for suggestions. Everyone, you could get a smaller car and save money. Next, he could keep his money in a savings account. However, usually you use that when someone doesn't ask you for advice, but you have an idea and you want to make a suggestion. The next is should, which is a little more forceful and a little more demanding in tone. So if someone asks you for advice, what should I do? Then you should feel very comfortable using should in your reply. And that would be, you should open a savings account little useful language window over on the right hand side it says for suggestions you can say and these are things that make it seem a little softer so that you're not demanding that somebody do what you say and then be disappointed when they don't listen to your suggestion so you can phrase it in this um, softer manner which would be why don't you plus the verb or how about plus a noun or how about plus the verb and ing so let's see how they're going to ask us to use that in the practice i think we've done this before where we just went along and did this together and inserted the correct word while we were reading so let's do that again together today just remember i'm expecting that you are reading this out loud and not silently. There we go. My rent is going up again. What should I do? Okay, there's should in the asking. Here's my advice. You're a good tenant. I think you should talk to your landlord. Actually, I didn't pronounce that correctly. The word is tenant. And the first time I did not push out the sound of the last letter. So the second time I did, and the last letter is T, making sure that you push out the sound of the last letter. One more time. My rent is going up again. What should I do? Here's my advice. You're a good tenant. I think you should talk to your landlord. Number two. I have to fix my credit. What should I do? You should talk to a debt counselor. He can help you. Number three, can you suggest a nice restaurant? It's my wife's birthday. This is a suggestion. You could Try chows, or how about Anita's? Softer. Next, it's my niece's 16th birthday next week. What could I get her? Why don't you get tickets to a concert? Or you could buy her a CD. The next one, that vocational school is very expensive. I can't afford it. Can you give me any advice? Here they're asking for advice. So, well, you're a good student. 
I think you should apply for a scholarship using the should. The next, I need a new car. Where do you suggest I look for one? Asking for advice. How about looking in the newspaper? Or you should look online. Next, who oh dare? <laughs> I just got another parking ticket. It's harder, it's getting harder and harder to park in this neighborhood. Here, actually, most people would probably use should. I think you should sell that car. You don't really need it. That's pretty strong advice, but here the problem is a little more severe. Number eight, I'm going to be in New York City in July. Any idea for things to do? Well, you could see a Broadway show, or you could walk in Central Park, or you could go to a museum. There are so many things to do. Right, could and should. Let's turn to the next page, page 87. Let's talk with a partner. I'm going to be the partner. You're going to be your own partner while we do this. The example, my car broke down. You could take the bus or you could ask someone for a ride. So this is advice. The next one, my rent is going up $150. Well, you could Okay, so you're at home giving yourself advice or giving this person advice on what to do when their rent is going up. So you're going to be doing this and just making sure that the way that you're going to answer it is going to be subject verb and using either could or should. So you could. Oh, that was entertaining and surprising. So do you have any advice as to what I should do? Okay, I like that one. I like the one that says you should put something in the front so it doesn't tip over. Just like the classroom. All right, here we go. Uh, we're still on page 87, number three. It's getting cold in here. The advice? Okay, so you could turn up the thermostat. You could put on a sweater. Perfect. Number four. I can't afford a new washing machine. You could. That's right. You could repair the one you have. Number five. These shoes look terrible. Well, you could repair them or you could, that's right, throw them away. <laughs> so here we go. Number six, I don't have enough cash to pay for these groceries. Okay, you could use a credit card. 
less, not a, not, not a great idea, but you could say, you could come back for them later. Number seven, I got a bad haircut. Okay, you should wear a hat. <laughs> okay. Number eight, my neighbors are really noisy. Advice? Here, I think I might use should because this is a really big problem. So you should, that's right, talk to your landlord. Actually, I would advise talking to the landlord before speaking to them because he probably uh, has more clout. Okay, here we go. Finished with section two, and I will be back with my whiteboard from calling over. over.